And we're back with some more oxygen not included. And today we're going to try and, uh, well, cool down our food with hopefully normal means. And what I mean by that is in here we have a bunch of carbon dioxide that is currently cooling all of our food. It has been pointed out to me in the comments, this is actually a standard practice in real life to use uh, frozen CO2 to store stuff. But we need, well, ours is going to cause problems eventually when it liquefies and tries to explode out of there. So what we want to do is put in a little steam turbine cooling loop here and make sure that that whole thing stays well chilled and then rip out all the carbon dioxide. But for now what we're doing is we're, we're actually adding in more carbon dioxide. Uh, our rocket's returned, we've got some more carbon dioxide, let's use that carbon dioxide to, uh, well, to add to the cooling. Now, give us a few minutes while we throw in some cooling here. Well, actually, well, we'll throw in double cooling, we're going to find some extra uses for this later on. We are ready to rock. What we've got here is, well, not too complicated. We're just using a thermoregulator here to chill down some hydrogen. It's going to pass through here if this is on, and it will turn on if the hydrogen is above 90 degrees. Yeah, we're, we're going really cold, just because we can. And then we'll send it through here, and then that should chill down this food area. The rest of it's all insulated, so it'll travel back through insulated pipes, cool down the steam turbine, and then just keep going round and round. Now I have thrown in a, a thermo aqua tuner. Why? Well, at some point we might want it, so I figure why not put it in now instead of having to worry about renovating it later. Now all we have to do is feed on the hydrogen. Now it'll take a while for it to go around in the loop to fill up, but it should be fairly okay. Oh, and power-wise, yeah, the power's coming from right up there. It's really close by, and we even put in this little vacuum-sealed little lock there to make sure everything works out, or that the, the temperature from in here doesn't leak out. And let's check it here. This should be coming in, was it coming in 27 and it's leaving 14 degrees cooler. It'll take a while, but eventually it'll cool down all the way. And once it's down, we can start removing all of that uh, carbon dioxide in there before it does something stupid like explode. And let's check. Carbon dioxide. 17 tons at minus 75. We're good. We're good until it hits 56.5. So we're, we're fine for at least a while longer. All right, well, that's going on. Let's actually seal that up. Mm. Actually, no. I will have a quick wait until the gas level gas fills up. I want to make sure there's no more gas being added, and once that's done, we can get rid of... Actually, is these all one kilos? No, no. We'll, we'll give this a few minutes. Looks like it's working quite nicely. Temperature's down to minus... Well, we're just getting into the minuses. Though, ironically, we're kind of... It's cooling down our gas as it passes through here, and then it's getting warmed up a bit as it passes through the steam turbine area. But it's okay. Steam turbine area is slowly but surely cooling down. And because we've sealed it off with insulated tiles, it'll eh, it'll get cool and stay cool. Alright, so now what we have to do is... Well, I want to put in a whole bunch of farms up here, but that means I'm going to need a whole bunch of cooling and temperature controls. So I think we expand our industrial brick first. This industrial brick needs a major makeover. I'm thinking we're going to tap it into the magma volcano, so we're going to need about eight steam turbines here. Which means this has got to go, the poke shells have got to go, that water's got to go. Pretty much everything around here has got to go. Hmm. Yeah, give me a minute. Actually, give me, give me several minutes. There's a couple of installs here that do need to go. This salt water device, or the salt water desalinator, that was providing water up to our... Uh, bottomless electrolyzer so that it could provide us with hydrogen for power. We don't need that anymore, so that whole system can go. Uh, what we do with that salt water, well, well, we'll figure that out at some point. The clean water, however, I think we just dump that into the vacuum of space. We don't need it, so just, yeah, there is perfectly fine. In fact, we're going to have to delete that whole thing probably at some point. But at least clean out the pipes so we can remove them out of the area. Oh, this whole area here can go. And in fact... Just about everything out to about here somewhere. I'll have to figure it out. We're going to need eight, well, four more steam turbines. We've got four there, so say one, two, three, four-ish. Yeah, I'll have to be more careful about it. Yeah, out to about there is going to be all steam turbines. Also, while we're at it, uh, we're starting to tame this puffed up here. We do have to tame a, a puffed at some point, and this one's old enough it's already laid an egg, so there's a wild egg lying around somewhere. That means we can knock out, actually, we've also knocked out poke shells. That just leaves, I think, slicksters? Oh no, we've already tamed a stickster. Never mind, we've, we've got very few critters left to tame. We're just knocking out a, a few of these side achievements as we go. Right now, we're just trying to extract all the infrastructure that's passing through here. Like these pipes, 
that go up to the reed fiber, they have to all go. Otherwise, they're going to start getting superheated in there. Also, we want to rip out any power wires that pass through there. Basically, anything that might interfere with what we're trying to do. We want to turn this entire room in here into one gigantic steam room, this whole area, and have a whole bunch of steam turbines strapped on top of it. Uh, what are we doing right here? Oh, we're making steel. Yeah, we have so much iron and so much lime. In fact, if we check here under steel, we have 28 tons of refined carbon. Well, we're making that for diamond. Two and a half tons of lime and, okay, we've got plenty of uh, iron coming in. It's just apparently being refined. And if we want even more lime, well, then all we got to do is grab some eggshells to lime. Eggshells to lime, we have three tons. We have three tons of eggshells that can be turned into lime. That's what it's like having that many fish. Those fish in there have just been churning out eggshells for us for ages. There's about 300 fish in there. That's just a lot of eggs. All right, and let's finish this off and get it prepped for business. Oh, I almost forgot. Over here, we're trying something a little different. Uh, let's go to liquids. You'll see here that there's a, a little liquid blob of naphtha there. That's actually causing this whole area to be sealed in if we go to the gas overlay. And actually, it's a vacuum already. Never mind. And uh, this is causing this to be a vacuum seal in between here and here, and we're going to fill this full of naphtha. So we should have effectively a double liquid lock, but for a lot less space. I thought we'd just give it a go, just to try. And what is going on with that? Where is it pulling gas from? Oh, there's no gas left, is there? It's just pretending. Yeah, it looks like it's pumping, but there's nothing left in there. Exit. Now we can fill up the rest of this with naphtha. Now, we could just leave this liquid lock as it is right now. It's technically working as intended. But you got to worry here, when we start filling this up with steam, some of that steam will turn to water and it might potentially break this liquid lock. So we want to make sure it's a proper full-size liquid lock and have no messing about. All right, everything else done. Yeah, we got a power spine going through there. We can kind of seal this in at the top now. Oh, wait, no. Get rid of a few more blocks up here. I know this all looks, well, rather messy right now and all over the place and we still haven't moved that liquid reservoir and there's, uh, well, it's sloppy. This is very sloppy so far, but I promise you there is some method somewhere to this madness. Uh, there, we're trying to also accommodate the farms in on top and I keep uh, redeciding where I want to, what level I want to put them at. You see, we want to avoid the rocket exhaust of any hydrogen rockets, so I think we need to bring our solar panels down one more level, just one more tile. Unfortunate, but necessary if we want to do this right. Now, uh, let's see. One thing I have been pretty lax about getting around to is installing some gas pumps to suck out the oxygen out of here. This is now all completely sealed in. It's liquid locked up. And if we check here and go under... Yep, yeah, gases? Yeah, that's a complete vacuum there, correct? Yep, yeah, vacuum. So there's a vacuum seal right there, which means the heat from this uh, naphtha shouldn't be able to translate out to this little blob of naphtha right there. It's just a miniature vacuum seal. Say, very similar to... One second while it saves. Uh, very similar to this down here, except we just sort of compressed it an awful lot. Well, that was the theory. And what have we got coming out of the gate today? I completely missed this. We'll take this sweet larvae. Why not? Off you go. Welcome to the team. Uh, I might want to make it impossible to get up there so that we can dump all the eggs up in that section. Hmm. No, I'll worry about that later. For now, for now, we really desperately want to get this finished. Because once we get this finished, we can get crops finished. And once we get those two finished, we can do more stuff in space. What's holding us back, or hamstringing us now on space exploration, is the amount of berry sludge we're able to produce. Currently, all of our berry sludge comes from Contrilia over here, where we're wild harvesting sleep wheat grain. And in fact, you might want to tap into some of the other locations. Hmm, I've got a, like a hundred seeds in there. I've been stockpiling some of them just in case we needed emergency ones, because if we run out of seeds, we're in trouble. Uh, but I have been stuck well, storing a bunch over here to keep them safe. Otherwise, they all get turned into food. But no, uh, let's see here. Let's uh, finish this off. All right, gases are being filtered. All of that oxygen will get pumped out of there. And if we check on here, we've only got carbon dioxide and oxygen in here. So we're going to suck out all the oxygen, leave the carbon dioxide in, and then add in an awful lot of steam. Oh, uh, we should probably let out that hydrogen blob as well. That can go. We do have to do a little bit of a transplant here. Uh, all of this polluted water that's going into our cooling loop across here, we're going to have to extend that on. So we somehow have to get all the liquid into that tank without deconstructing this one. I think we can just use some bridging to make that work. Probably. We'll, we'll find out in a minute. My plan is just to grab a bridge like this, a liquid bridge like this one. Uh, throw it right there. And done. That should be a case of hooking them all, and then, well, we'll have to hook that up there, of course, but that should be the end of it. Of course, I've probably messed something up. We'll, we'll find out. Would you look at that? We managed to extend the cooling loop without anything catastrophic happening. I'm 
kind of shocked, but pleasantly so. All right, well, let's throw then another steam turbine there, and things are looking way up. Oh, and how are we looking on the gases front here? All right, we're finally getting into the carbon dioxide part. Uh, ooh. We might need to place some more gas pumps around the place. This is just awkward. Or, or we could add in more carbon dioxide. I do happen to have some lying around. It's a bit cold. We do have a nice hot pool of water we could dump it into. Hmm. You know what? That might be an idea. Let me think about that for a bit. Uh, first, though, you know, we'll give it another few minutes to see how well it does. Plus, we can move those gas pumps up into the corners just to help them out. I think, I think our system's not looking too bad. This whole place is now full of nothing but carbon dioxide. We managed to rip out all the other gases. Uh, there is, well, next part would be to turn this into a giant steam room. And we've got a whole bunch of hot water here, and we've got a whole bunch of heat. So all we have to do is combine the two. Uh, one mistake I made, though, was uh, the Slicksters are in here now, so they're dropping blobs of oil everywhere. We don't want that touching that abyssal or it'll turn to sour gas. So we need to figure out a way to get all that crude oil out of there. Hmm. Actually, I got an idea. That gets all the crude oil out of the way. We can use that in something later. But for now, it's time to start steaming places up. Uh, I'm thinking... Oh, I've put in a, a little bit of extra insulated tiles here to help insulate this place. And let's just break down in. I don't want to touch the obsidian just yet. Uh, the reason being, that stuff's like 1500 degrees. Instead, I want to kind of dig down through this abyssalite. When liquids interact with abyssalite, they tend to flash into ga into gas, which actually works out really well for us. So we're just going to sort of dig down like this and let the abyssalite do its thing. It should work. We'll just sort of get steam bubbles popping out of here, so to speak. There we go. It's hit the abyssalite, and you can see it's just forming a little layer of steam right there. That is exactly what we wanted. Well... Preferably, I wouldn't have had the slicksters in here, and then we wouldn't have any of this oil, we wouldn't be risking sour gas, and we just take the entire top off and let the whole thing percolate, but uh, not really an option at the moment. As you can see, the abyssalite there is slowly decreasing in temperature as it boils every blob of liquid that touches it. Yep, just one of those wonderful bugs or features, whatever you want to call it. It's amazing, it just keeps turning little blobs of, of any liquid that touches it immediately into steam. Uh, the way the bug works is if it touches a liquid and that liquid and the temperature of the abyss light is higher than the boiling point of the liquid that's touching it, the liquid immediately, or 10 kilos of the liquid or 5 kilos of liquid, immediately flashes to gas, its gaseous form. Well, that's the way I understand it. Yeah, well, that's a... I want to expand that, expand that out a bit more. Wow, that is actually... Whoa, whoa. Let's get rid of that. We don't want to be pumping any uh, non-salt water, if you wouldn't mind. And let's extend this on a wee bit. Well, that seems kind of steamy. Perfect. Now, uh, oh yeah, next step. I want all the things up here, I replaced all of them with steel. So steel battery was already in, but I replaced all the coal generators with steel. This metal refinery is made of ceramic. Those batteries are made of steel. Unfortunately, this metal refinery I've made is, is made of igneous rock. But once it's finished, whatever it's doing right now, we're going to uh, replace that with a ceramic one and then somehow get the, uh, the naphtha back into it. Somehow, probably. All right, and down here, Yep, yeah, yep, yeah. it's looking, it's looking good. Turns out you also need to make the ceiling lights out of steel. That's, uh, yeah, my bad. <laughs> hey, it's been a while since I made one of these, uh, industrial saunas. Let's see, yeah, let's grab some steel right there, perfect. And, uh, I need to figure out some way of getting that, uh, naphtha back into the metal refinery, but that will have to wait a minute. Actually, that naphtha probably ended up back down here. We have an automatic bottle emptier to go dump that stuff. All right, I think, I think that's the start of our industrial sauna. Uh, I haven't opened this up just yet. I'm not sure there's enough steam pressure. Uh, we're going to need a whole bunch more of these tiles, I think. Yeah, we can put them across there. That should help spread it out. And I think we can get rid of all of this. Yeah, that can go. We're only going to need one tile there. And that should, yeah, allow the steam to go wherever it wants to. Ah, it looks beautiful. However... It's still not hot enough. You'll notice up here it's near about 100 degrees. We want it to be a little bit warmer, so... Right, let's see what happens when we uh, reveal some of that obsidian to our uh, to the world. Yeah, there's a fair bit of water down here. I'm sure we'll get a whole bunch of steam. But it will be... Like, the thing about abyss light is it only, it only pushes the water temperature up to about 100 degrees. So that allowed us to boil all of that salt water pretty much instantly. Over this, this is going to heat it up to more than 100 degrees. Yeah, how's it doing? Oh, that's... Uh, not nearly as dramatic as I was expecting. You know, I was kind of expecting more of a... 
Whoosh. Okay, sorry, I know whoosh is not a great word, but that was the only one I could think of. All right, well, give that a few minutes, I suppose. Yeah, it's slowly draining the heat, and eventually I suppose that magma in there will start to solidify. Maybe a temperature shift plate would help. Or am I being impatient? I'm probably being impatient, but you know what? Why not? Let's just do... Di no, diamond is way too conductive. Obsidian seems like a good choice because it can't melt. That should... Yeah, there we go. That's a lot faster. That's more what we were hoping for. And it's draining the temperature out of there much more rapidly. Perfect. That should help start getting things up to... Well, up to pressure. Now, what are we looking at in here? We've got 160 kilos in here. I think we can just delete these insulated tiles here now. Uh, oh, and that puffed is in there. Well, that puffed is going to die. What's your heat... What, what, what are you comfortable to? Livable up to 105 C. That's actually pretty impressive. But I'm afraid that won't save you. Uh, let's just try... In fact, we can take out all of this. This is... Mm, actually, no, we can't. We'll be letting the heat out. So we can take out from there onwards, I think. Here, let's start this side and hope nothing horrific happens. Yeah, we can, we can start this side. Like the thing is, even with the temperature overlay, you can't really tell. This is 140 degrees in here, and outside it's 99, but there's not enough of a temper dif temperature differential to even notice uh, when it comes to the color overview. Like, I, I can't tell anything from that. But I think... Uh, you know what? We'll find out. Also, one of the great things, we get to repair this pipe. That has kind of been annoying me for a while. And we get to sweep up the dirt that was in here. Not... Not amazingly great things, but it was just one of those little things that kind of bugs you for a while, and now it's now it's finished. It's done. We don't have to worry about it anymore. All right, that seems to have worked out. Yeah, steam pressure is still good. We're looking at about 250 kilos of pop. That's actually quite decent pressure all the way around. A little bit lower down here. And any water that ends up down here immediately starts flashing to steam at a reasonable temperature, though we really need to up the temperature a wee bit more. Oh, you know what? We need to mop all of that. You... Wow, how is that? That You know, we can just deconstruct that tile. Done. All of that water will pour down there. Problem solved. Should have thought of that earlier. Also, I'm an idiot because I completely forgot I had this piping system going through here. This pipe was designed to cool down this area, but that's probably not a good idea when the area you're trying to cool down is a steam room. So we're going to quickly replace all of those with ceramic piping. Uh, come on. Hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. One more. Better. Much, much better. Oh god, how much heat do we dump in there? It's up to 46 degrees. 40... It's fine. It's fine. It's not that bad. It's not that bad. Probably. It's it's okay. It's okay. Ah, buggery. Alright, well, we can completely redesign this now. And, you know what? Uh, let's get ourselves up a storage bin. I'm thinking we put a couple of tons of carbon dioxide in here. In fact, what happened to all our carbon dioxide? Oh, it's totally compressed down. Yeah. Well, we're going to need something to keep our sixter alive. We've tamed it, have we? Yeah. Oh, no. Still wild. But that's okay. We just need to tame one, and as long as we can keep the others alive, uh, we should be fine. Up until we get to the point we can start using all that carbon dioxide we harvested from space. So, the plan here, quite simple. We have a storage bin set to two tons, we've set it to liquefiable and carbon dioxide, so it should pick up solid carbon dioxide. Then we just go back to our home base over here, and we have this storage bin in range of this auto sweeper, what happens to also be in range of all that carbon dioxide. We set this to two tons, and normally its job is to pull it rot pile. If anything rots in here, this uh, auto sweeper immediately whisks it out. We don't want any rot in there, that would be, you know, bad. It would mess with stuff. So let's also go to liquefiables, and let's find ourselves some carbon dioxide. Perfect. Now come on. No, no, that's barbecue. Okay, a ton of carbon dioxide, two tons of carbon dioxide. And I think we're done. We don't want any more, we don't want it pulling it anymore. That two tons of carbon dioxide can get... Yeah, that can get taken over to our storage container over this side. And then once it's in there, we can drop it on the ground and let it melt. Yeah, two tons of... Considering the amount of steam pressure in here, it won't be great. It'll probably be about five, ten tiles? Ten tiles of carbon dioxide? Well, when it melts. Which should be pretty quickly, to be honest. This carbon dioxide is going to take a while to melt, but that is okay. We can just set up lots of them. So, two, four, six, eight, ten, yet? Why not? We can dump them all down here. Well, we're just about there. This carbon dioxide has hit 55.8. I think there's a two degree difference between when they 
acidifying when they liquefy. So this might have to get to about 55.5 or 54.5, I think, before it'll eventually pop. Why do I feel like this carbon dioxide is lying about its melting point? Okay, so three degrees. You have to go three degrees. That gives us... Yeah, a bit of a few blobs of carbon dioxide. All right, the rest of them will melt eventually. I left them in the storage containers, but at some point they will also pop. That should give us more than enough carbon dioxide to start farming our sixters before they get starving. We might have to move the ranches down a bit. Hopefully that doesn't mess too much with temperature transfer. Well, stuff to worry about later. We have also filled up, we got some naphtha and put it into this metal refinery. So now our metal refineries are back up and running at full speed. Still have not hooked up these steam turbines just yet. There's no real need for them considering the amount of heat that we're generating, but uh, as we dig down further in here and start exposing more of the subsidian, we're probably going to have to take more of those steam turbines online, especially if we want to run that volcano flat out. I'm not going to seal in that volcano. We're just going to let it sit in here and generate heat for us. Well, we've got our carbon dioxide all popped. Now I think we're going to have a, a quick sidestep into doing just a little bit of farming before we end today's episode, namely because we just need more of this going on. Oh. Second, we're transferring our only exuberant bristle, blo ah, bristle blossom. This is one of the mutated ones, and now we'll get a, an idea for what I'm trying to achieve here with this. In fact, well, you know what? We'll dig this from the outside. We're going to have to remove this top roof to start radiating things in here, and uh, yeah, this should be an interesting way of radiating things. Yeah, I think you might enjoy this next bit. And that's the start of our farms up here for the bristle blossoms. Now. That one up there is not growing. This one here is a mutated plant. And the thing about mutated plants is they require radiation to grow. As in, if there's no radiation, they don't have a hope. They need at least 250 rads to grow. And the basic ones, well, they need at least, I think it's 250 rads to actually have a chance of mutating. I think that's how it is. But the closer they are to their uh, maximum ambient radiation, the more likely they are to mutate. So what we're going to do is give them rads. But give them all the rads from space. And normally when you're taking rads from space, you've got some problems. For example, you put in a roof here like this, and it actually soaks up the radiation. So we've got 375 rads coming in here, we put down some igneous rock tiles, next thing you know, we've reduced it to 150. Uh, another problem you face is when it passes through, the oxygen in the air actually absorbs some of it. So the further you go through atmosphere, the more it uh, degrades it. So the only walls you can get that are actually perfect transmitters of, oh my god, how did you... Brendan, you, you locked yourself up there, didn't you, buddy? God damn it. Uh, I gotta figure out how to get Brendan down out of there one moment. Well, Brendan should be out of there shortly. We're just waiting on some deliveries. So what we're going to do while we're waiting is we're going to chop out these two tiles. You see, right now, the amount of radiation getting has to pass through those two tiles, and it's reducing it from 375 to 80 rads to 74, 71. So this plant down here is only getting the very bare minimum of rads, 71, which is not enough. Come on. No. Dip, dip. Fine, I will up the priority a bit so you actually think about it more. Now, once they start chipping away at that, we go from, let's see, we're up to 204 rads, and then, boom, we're now at 316 rads, and it's growing. Perfect. Oh, so the solar panel is generating power. We don't care about that. The only reason these solar panels ex are here is so that they block no radiation. Well, minuscule amounts. There's a little bit of gas atmosphere there, so that's actually blocking some, but... All in all, we're still able to get more than enough rads to keep our plants down here growing. So two of these will support 14 hydroponic tiles, and then we're going to have our sleep wheat over here, which we're also going to mutate and grow in rads. So all of these uh, bristle blossoms, these ones are not mutated yet, but exposure to this radiation should help get us a few mutations slowly over time, which is we're kind of okay with. And at the same time, guys, maybe, maybe get rid of all of that while you're there. Ah, beautiful. Now, uh, over here where the sleet wheat goes, what I'm thinking is we put in a, ooh, a cooling solution in here, like a thermo aqua tuner, and we use that to, well, make an ice box in here, and then we rotate the water through uh, around and around and around to make sure that this place stays cool, because it's, of course, a little bit warm at the moment. Uh, for the bristle blossoms, we didn't really need to do much. Well, yes, the reason being we're sending in water that's, well, below the 30 degree temperature, and oh my god, why is that so cold? Oh... Yeah, the temperature here is going to plummet. There's no more. We used to be pumping the hot salt water through here to heat this up. That's not happening anymore, which means, yeah, we're going to have to, like, start heating the water in here again. Um, or heating the water in there. That salt water, like, the salt water from here was getting l piped through this area to heat up the, the chilly slush geysers. And then after it was piped through there, it was cleaned and sent down here. So we have a giant tank of clean water that's about, well, 30 degrees. 
Uh, some of it's 27, some of it's 30, some of it's 31. Yeah, that, that worked out really, really well. Though it is stifling some of the crops over here, but that's fine. That's fine. We can fix that later. Plus, we've just, we've opened a new farm up here. And once these start mutating and we get more of these uh, exuberant variants, we'll be able to pump out so much. And we can enable that building there because this is now a farm. Yeah, right there. And we're even going to give it a vacuum liquid lock in a bit, but not just yet. I think, I think we have done more than enough progress for today. We have got our cooling done for our foods, and that is actually going quite well. I changed the temperature to about 40 degrees later on. Once we got the carbon dioxide out of there, I figured it was safe. Uh, our calorie-wise, yeah, we're, we're swimming. We've got half a, we've got almost 600,000 calories of gristleberry. We have so much water. It's just insane. Uh, at the same time, we also got this entire place steamed up, though. I'm thinking, I think I'm going to do a, a, a tall uh, slickster ranch in here. And then what we're going to do is pump all the carbon dioxide in there and keep the carbon dioxide in this area. Namely because the carbon dioxide in here is just kind of wasteful. I feel like every time the slicksters eat it, they're destroying heat. So maybe remove all the carbon dioxide from here and only limit the carbon dioxide to our farms, which means we're going to need another liquid lock. And what am I doing? No, no, that's, that's for the next episode. Anyway, I am going to cut this out here. I uh, hope you enjoyed and good luck.